Welcome to the London School of English Live. Uh, by popular request, today's live stream is about pronunciation in English. Uh, we picked 30 words uh, that can be difficult to pronounce in English, and uh, our expert English language trainer, Emma Palmieri, will give you tips on pronouncing them correctly. And uh, she uh, will also share strategies for learning accurate pronunciation. Here with us today, we also have my uh, colleague, Faiza Afsal, from our uh, sales team who advises clients on choosing the most suitable English training for them, including if they want to focus on pronunciation. And uh, if you're new here, uh, this session uh, is sponsored by the London School of English and uh, you can uh, learn general business exam, IELTS, um, uh, legal English, uh, both in our face-to-face -face classes uh, in our beautiful center in London and uh, in virtual groups online. So uh, you can find out more uh, about our English training on our website, uh, londonschool.com, and we'll share this website uh, shortly with you. So uh, welcome, Emma and Faiza. Hi. Hi, Olga. Hi, everyone. Um, just as usual, uh, as what happens usually, uh, if you've got any questions or comments, um, you can uh, share with share them uh, in, on the live chat next to the video. And uh, meanwhile, uh, let's get started. So uh, Emma will uh, lead the main uh, content of this uh, live stream and then uh, we'll join her at the Q&A session uh, at the end. But uh, first of all, uh, a little bit of a discussion about uh, what's right and wrong in pronunciation in English. So Emma, over to you. Yeah, okay, so one of the hardest things about learning English is mastering the pronunciation. Many students struggle with this and get quite embarrassed when they mispronounce a word. People don't understand you and you end up feeling stupid. Indeed, many non-native speakers avoid speaking to native speakers for this reason. They're convinced they will end up mispronouncing a word and then look stupid. Don't. You are not stupid. English pronunciation is just impossible. It is not a phonetic language. You see, Pfizer, you agree with me. And yes. when you hear a word, you see how it's spelled, it doesn't tell you how to say it. I'm a native speaker, and if I see a word that I've never heard before, maybe the name of a, a town somewhere, I don't know how to pronounce it correctly. Of course, I can guess, but I won't be sure. Media organisations in the UK and US, like the BBC, employ people to advise newsreaders on TV and radio how to pronounce unusual words and names because it isn't easy. It's not obvious. And we disagree, don't we, about like sort of things like um, words like scone or scone. How do you say it, Pfizer? I think I say scone. Scone. You see, I say scone. My mum says scone. Yeah. What do you say, Olga? You're muted, Olga. <laughs> Olga, we can't hear you. I'm sorry. No problem, no problem. <laughs> a bit of a technical uh, hiccup. So uh, I would say phone, uh, but I guess it's different for everyone. Uh, but we have a picture for those uh, of our viewers who, for example, haven't yet had the chance to try this. Uh, so that's how it looks. <laughs> And, it's also and it just just so you know, when you're going to order it anywhere in London, it doesn't matter how you say it. They'll they'll make sure to bring you that because it's very popular here. <laughs> so don't worry. Are they still making delicious scones in the school restaurant? Yeah, yeah. They're good. They are very good and yeah. save lots of calories, particularly if you have them with the jam and the cream. But very mm. very good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hi, Hi Dickie, how are you? <laughs> so. That's one of the words that we disagree about how to pronounce, but there are others like neither, neither. Is it neither? Is it neither? We can say both. Is it often or is it often? Do we pronounce the T or not? Okay. It's, you know, it, we, we can disagree about these things. There's so many of these words. Pfizer, can you think of any more? So I have a Canadian accent and I think sometimes because of that, there are certain words that I say differently. So uh, data or data mm -hmm. is one. Um, aluminium 
or aluminum is another one. Um, and for me also, because I've spent now sort of 10 years in the UK, but I spent five years in Canada and then I was in an international school, um, it changes. <laughs> so sometimes I'll be saying neither, other times I'll be saying neither. And yeah. then I'll often say often. <laughs> so okay, yeah. even within a single person, it can change yeah, exactly. um, quite a lot. So my message is, is really difficult. We don't know what to say half the time either. So don't worry about it either or either. <laughs> anyway, okay. half of the time we can't decide what to say. So don't worry about it. Don't feel self-conscious. Just speak. Okay. That is the most important thing. Definitely. Okay. Um, so obviously there are tools out there to help you. Uh, for example, we have um, the phonetic alphabet. Some of you that have studied with us before, you might be familiar uh, with this table of symbols. Each symbol represents a sound, okay? So when you see the phonetic script written, it can help you know how to say the word. On our website, um, we have um, lots of information about it and practice activities that you can do to um, get to be more familiar with it. Um, so, um, an example of how this could work is you probably know the word Wednesday. Yes, you probably say Wednesday. But you think about how it's spelt. It's spelt with a D. But if I say Wednesday, then obviously it sounds wrong, doesn't it? Yeah, it's Wednesday. So that's a good example of a word. You need to see the um, phonetic script in order to know how it's pronounced when you look at it, okay? Because if you just look at the letters, you're going to say Wednesday, which is a bit weird. Okay, so I would recommend to find the phonetic script, obviously. <laughs> you can come to the school, we will teach you. You can look at our website, that's very helpful. Um, or you can also refer to dictionaries online or the book form, such as Cambridge, Longman, in all of these things, you will find the phonetic script written next to the word that will help you, okay? As I said, we have them in the schools. Um, we can practice using them. We can practice using the sounds. There's also an app from um, the British Council to practice saying the sounds as well, okay? So all of these resources can help you be more familiar with the phonetic script. So when you find a new word, you can look up how it's written and then Hopefully that will help you say it correctly. Okay, now in real life, it's true to say, isn't it, oh, <laughs> Olga Pfizer? You don't always have time to look in the dictionary every time you want to say a word. It's not very realistic, okay? So I'm going to teach you the top 30 words that students mispronounce. The most common words which students make mistakes on in the pronunciation. And we'll look at little tips and tricks to try to make your pronunciation more accurate overall. Okay, guys, let's begin. So we begin with number 30. Number 30 is looking at the places in London. Now, place names are classics, okay? You look at them, I don't really know until I hear them how you say them. They're very unusual words and they're pronounced in very special ways for example number 30 greenwich greenwich okay so you see that w is silent we don't say greenwich it's greenwich okay um it's a very nice place and um, we have social programs sometimes there it's where um the meridian is where the timeline is so it's a very interesting place to visit in east london the next is also another place in London, probably one you've heard of, very famous, and one which many students mispronounce. It is not Leicester Square, which is what many students say. It is actually Leicester Square, Leicester Square. Now that is very difficult to predict. If you don't know it, it doesn't look like that from the letters at all, does it? But it's Leicester Square. Next, another place in London, Tottenham Court Road. Okay, Tottenham Court Road. It's a place you go if you want to do lots of shopping on London. It's, it's in the corner of Oxford Street and Charing Cross and Tottenham Court Road. And um, it's very, very popular with our visitors. 
lots of people try to pronounce it in full, Tottenham Court Road, but you just push it all together. So it's Tottenham Court Road. Finally, we move outside of London, wonderful city though it is, and we visit Scotland, okay? Lots of people like to visit, maybe for the weekend, maybe a bit longer, to the beautiful Scottish city of, can you guess what I'm gonna say? Edinburgh, Edinburgh, okay? I don't know how many of you have been to Edinburgh. It is a fantastic place, has a really good arts festival in August, and lots of people find it difficult to say. <laughs> My uh, advice, it sounds like an M before the B, so Edim, it's written an N, but you say it like an M for mother, so it sounds like Edinburgh, Edinburgh. Very good. Okay, so now we move to one of our first rules. In British English, the two letters T-U, when put together, particularly in the middle of a word, though sometimes also at the beginning of a word, it's not pronounced two, it's pronounced ch, that symbol, the T and the strange long thing, ch, ch, chu, chu. So what words do we find this sound in? The first one is fortune, fortune. Everybody would love to have a fortune, wouldn't they? Lots and lots of money, or maybe to find a fortune somewhere and become very, very rich, okay? Or make a fortune, okay? But it's not fortune, it's a fortune, tune. Uh, the next word, maybe, when you've made your fortune, you will decide to go and have an adventure, okay? An adventure, maybe you go traveling, you see new things, you meet new people, have exciting times, okay? But it's not an adventure, it is an adventure, sure. Almost like a CH, a sort of sound you would expect to come from a CH, it's actually adventure. Next one, a very useful word. What I tell my students is one of the most useful words in English, actually actually okay so notice you go at chili so it's almost like you go up on the act and down on the chili and it's a very useful word because it shows you're about to say something a little bit surprising or unexpected so maybe if you say to somebody like sort of oh um i'm really looking forward to seeing you tonight you say mm, actually you know the person's not coming it's a unexpected or if you say um uh oh what part of america do you come from and you go oh actually i'm from canada okay so it's something unexpected but it's a very very useful word next word coming back to london that wonderful metropolis we come to like the british museum which is a temple of culture okay culture not culture culture sure Okay, so culture where you see art, where you see beautiful historic monuments, maybe where you experience music, theatre, culture. Next is a bit more uh, food related, and we're moving to the beginning of words. Sometimes the tu, the ch sound can happen at the beginning of the word, and that happens in the delicious fish we call tuna, not tuna, tuna. Again, staying with London, if we think about the underground, we hardly ever say underground, actually, when we live in London. It's a very long word. We don't often say it. Instead, we say, are you going to get the tube home? The tube, okay? We mean the underground, okay? But it's pronounced tube, even though it's written like tube, okay? But we say tube. And finally, uh, we have a teacher, somebody maybe is your private teacher, spends a lot of um, time giving you individualized um, feedback like we have in our schools. We call this a tutor, okay, a tutor. Somebody who helps you often get better grades and is a private teacher rather than is somebody who works in a government run school or something like that. That is person is called your tutor. Okay, so that's a T-U sound pronounced chu. Next, we're going to move on to another very common um, feature of English pronunciation, which is cutting out the bit in the middle. Sometimes in English, when we see a long word, we think, oh, 
It's a very long word. We're not going to say all of that word. You're a bit lazy, maybe. And we miss out the middle sound, okay? And this happens with the next four words. We just miss out the middle sound, okay? Um, so let's look at the first one. We have is vegetable. Not vegetable. If you say vegetable, you sound a bit like a robot. So don't say that. Say vegetable. The second E, missing. Okay, the next one, exactly the same pattern. If you're sitting in a chair, oh, it's very nice. It's very soft. It's very comfortable. Comfortable, okay? Again, don't say comfortable. <laughs> Sounds a bit like a robot. Comfortable. Comfortable. Can you say that? Comfortable. Next one, one of our favorite things of all time is, can you guess? Chocolate, chocolate. I love chocolate. I don't know if you like chocolate too, but I love chocolate, not chocolate. <laughs> chocolate, two syllables, okay? It looks a lot longer, but just chocolate, chocolate. Okay, next one is interesting mm, interesting for example it's an interesting fact that in holland park the park right next to the school there are lots of animals including this beautiful bird the peacock and sometimes you can hear them from the school it sounds very exotic okay it's a very interesting park to visit they also have opera which i particularly like so we say it's interesting not interesting Again, a bit robotic. We say in, stress on the first part. Interesting, interesting, okay. Okay, now the next part, okay, as I told you, English pronunciation, why? It's very, very difficult. Sometimes in writing letters, we don't bother saying them at all, okay? So as we said, a bit's in the middle missing, sometimes letters missing, okay? This often happens when we have two consonants next to each other. Like in this word, wouldn't you love to go to a beautiful desert island in the sea? Look how lovely that is, okay? How warm, peaceful, relaxing. But we do not say Iceland, even though there's an S written in it. We say island, island. The S is silent. Okay, another letter which is very often silent, particularly towards the end or at the end of words, is the B, okay? Some students try to say to me, Emma, I went to the countryside and I saw lots of sheep and some baby lambs, lambs, that's wrong, okay? You don't need to pronounce the B, it is a silent B, lambs. So just pretend the B is not there. Ignore the B if you're saying it, if you're writing it, remember the B. But if you're saying it, ignore the beat, because lambs, aren't they beautiful and cute? Also, another word with a silent B that many students don't realise is silent is the word doubt. Doubt. Okay, you pronounce the T at the end, but you do not pronounce the B. Imagine how difficult it would be to say a B and T together. Doubt, but it's very difficult to say, so we don't. We Cancel the B when we're saying it, we just say doubt, doubt. So we say, do you have any doubts about English pronunciation? If so, come and ask us, we can help you. Finally, another silent letter that is commonly not realized it's there is P in receipt. Okay, we don't say receipt. <laughs> Again, very difficult to say. Receipt, receipt. Okay, so receipt. Now look at my teeth. Look how many beautiful teeth I've got, you see? That's what you need to do with your mouth when you say receipt, okay? Push your mouth to the sides. Then you'll say it beautifully. So a receipt you get when you buy um, something from the supermarket. You need to keep to a receipt if you want to get a refund maybe later. Okay, now the next one's a little bit complicated. So I hope you're paying attention. This is for words which are the same if they're a verb and if they're a noun with two syllables. 
So, for example, let me think. Record. Record. Okay, two syllables. We can say, um, uh, I bought a record from the music shop. Or you could say, did you record that show? Notice the difference in my pronunciation, okay? When we use it as a noun, say, for example, in a business context, you might say, for example, do you have a record of the meeting? We pronounce the first syllable, the first part when it's a noun, a record. Do you have a record of the meeting? But if we use the same word as a verb, did you record the conference? Notice, did you record? I'm emphasizing the second syllable, record. This is a really, really common pattern in English. And to you, maybe it sounds like a very, very small difference, but to English people, it sounds quite natural, okay? So it sounds a bit odd if you don't say it right. So it's something to remember. Another example could be increase or decrease. Again, we could say, for example, uh, it was good to see the increase, the increase, and now the increase in sales. That's excellent. We like to increase sales, yes? But we like to increase sales, okay? Or something decreased, okay? The second syllable when we're using it as a verb. The same rule, okay? I don't expect you to remember this every time you open your mouth and start to speak English. But next time you're listening to maybe somebody in a meeting or you're listening to a show, listen out for it and see if you notice it too. Exactly the same rule when we come to phrasal verbs. Now, don't you just love phrasal verbs? They're my favourite part of English, completely unpredictable. And so many of them, you can't hope to know them all. But it's just a wonderful part of English, I think. Um, and when they have two parts, so the verb and the preposition, can you guess what happens if you stress the first part first? That's right. Okay, if you stress the first part, the verb, it is used as a noun. That's very counterintuitive. So let's look at an example, okay? Take off. Take off. Take off. Phrasal verb together, yeah? We look at a plane and I can tell my friend, how was the flight? How was the flight? I tell my friend, ah, the takeoff was really good. The takeoff was really good, meaning when the plane went into the air. The takeoff was really smooth, you know, very professional, very comfortable, okay? That's using it as a noun. If I use it as a verb, again, the second part is stressed. So you might ask the question, what time does the flight take off? Take off. So I'm stressing the second part because I'm using it as a verb. Think of another example. Um, let's think of breakdown. Okay, breakdown. Okay, again, verb, preposition. Okay, again, the first syllable, break, is stressed when we're using it as a noun. So maybe hmm, there's a negotiation going on between two different sides. We could talk about there was a breakdown, a, a breakdown, a noun in communication between the two sides. Okay, that's using it as a noun, or the laptop broke down halfway through the presentation. We're using it as a verb. Okay, that might take a bit of processing, but you'll get there. Listening is key part of pronunciation. The more you listen, notice these things, your pronunciation will improve as well. The next part, staying on a business -y theme, Often we teach students to do presentations, okay? That's something that students often feel very stressed about because, um, you know, they have to speak in front of their peers. It's stressful in, even in your first language, let alone a second language. So we try to create a safe space for them to practice this, get their confidence up. So when they go back to their um, working lives, they can do it with more confidence and feel that, you know, they're really... Um, showing everybody what they can do and giving the best professional image they can. So one key way to do this is using connected speech in English, okay? It really helps you sound more natural and it also helps your listening because native speakers do this all the time. Connected speech is where you do not speak 
each word separately, but they all go together. They all change and sort of move into each other. Now, this happens particularly with some words together. And a classic is don't you or did you? Okay, so if you say it separately, it's don't you or did you? But as I said, almost nobody says that. In reality, they use connected speech. And that produces, instead of don't you, it produces don't you, don't you, don't you, okay? Again, the ch sound that we saw with the T-U. So the ch, ch sound, don't you. So don't you think it's a good idea? Don't you think it's a good idea? Did you becomes did you, did you, <laughs> even more like, <laughs> together, like you're eating your words, okay? Very, very common in spoken English, okay? Did you speak to the client? Did you speak to the client? Okay. So just a couple of these, um, these uh, examples of connected speech can help you sound a lot more natural and also it helps you be, uh, being more aware of this can help you understand native speakers a lot more easily. So did you is did you. Okay, now we move to some hidden sounds the secret sounds, okay? And next one, we're using this symbol. Do we know what this symbol means? No, maybe it's or, or, okay? This sound we see in many words, which maybe is surprising. It's what we call the hidden or. Many students expect to, the letters O-R, like or, <laughs> like I want a cake or a biscuit, okay, or to be written O-R, yes, the sound to be written with O-R, it's logical, and it is, of course it is, so more, <laughs> we make the sound, it is O-R written, but there are many other words written differently that also have this or sound. Um, A-W can also have the or sound, for example, law, I cannot tell you how many lawyers I've taught in my life. <laughs> many, many, many. And very few of them can pronounce this word correctly. <laughs> it's a very important word for them. It's law. So say it like you've got an O-R at the end, okay? Because it's exactly the same sound, that symbol we saw before. Law. Can you see it? L, that symbol. It's an OR symbol. Law. Like door. Like more. Another word that has a hidden or is the season we are currently in, towards the end, and that is autumn, autumn. So it's written A-U, but again, it has the or sound, autumn, autumn. Another very common word that is written uh, differently, but still has the same or sound is all, <laughs> all. All of us, okay? So it's not al, some people try to say, it's all, all, okay? We all need to work on our pronunciation, even native speakers. We all need it, okay? That brings me to my top three, top three mispronounced words, okay? So these are very common or difficult words to pronounce in English. But let's look at them together and we'll get them right together. Okay, number three, half of the population of the world are women, not women, <laughs> women. Okay, this is a very misleading one. You've got an O, but you don't pronounce it O, you pronounce it I. It's very unusual, okay? So uh, lots of students get it wrong. It's women. Women, think of it like us together, we, we are women. Okay, it's not quite the same, but it will guide you towards the right pronunciation, women. Okay, the next one, number two, we have somebody who works hard, is very methodical, very logical, 
focuses on the details, looks at all of it together, we describe this person as very thorough. Thorough. Now look at that spelling, okay? I chose this word because this bit, O-U-G-H, the last four letters could be pronounced in many, many different ways. You need to look it up because there are about 10 different ways. We can say rough, we can say ooh, as in through, <laughs> we can say r, as in thorough, okay? This is just another example of how English is very difficult to pronounce. You need to look at phonetic script and don't feel bad because we also need to get help or when we are learning English, we find it very difficult as well. When we go to school, <laughs> It is a big thing, okay? Finally, my favourite student mistake of all is when students say to me, for work, I need to wear a sweet. <laughs> it's very funny, okay? A sweet in English is like candy, okay? I don't think you wear candy when you go to work. Probably, unless your job is very unusual. You probably wear what we see this very handsome man wearing here, a suit, a suit, okay? So you again, the I don't really pronounce, it's more like an ooh sound. So suit, okay? So that is the end of my 30 mispronounced English words, okay? Hopefully you've learned some tips to help you, but also, you're aware that it's very difficult for everybody to understand these words and we all have to learn and use a phonetic script to help us together. Thank you very much, Emma. It, uh, I'm sure that uh, we all learned from, uh, from your lesson and uh, this was very helpful. And uh, we had a lot of people commenting. Uh, it's really good to see uh, some of our alumni joining us. So we have Franco who uh, joined us. And we have uh, um, we also have uh, Christian Platzer, uh, mm -hmm. who uh, joined us uh, here today. And he actually mentioned that he spent some time with us. Um, two years ago. Yeah, two years ago. That's great. Uh, welcome, Christian. Uh, and I'm sure that we've got uh, more alumni. Uh, so please do share your questions and uh, comments in the live chat. We also had uh, new viewers um, who joined us. Uh, we have uh, Nagam Chodala joining us and uh, uh, and a few more uh, people. Uh, Maite, hello, Durigo, uh, Mudatir, uh, who also shared with us some of the examples um, of mm. silent letters. Hey, so that was a very good one that he shared. Just Yes. And uh, actually, Duigo uh, has just commented uh, on some pronunciation of, um, of a famous painting, huh. um, Tate Museum. Do you know That's this one, Emma? Because I don't think I do. I think, I, 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 I think it's Chumley. But I'm sure you might, you, might, you might correct my pronunciation, tell me if I'm right or not. But I think it's Chumley. But I only know that because I read a book about something commenting on the spelling of that. And so mm -hmm. Okay. That. Yeah. So that's the only reason I know. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, uh, as we, um, and we also have Maite who mentioned that actually she spent Christmas ah. with us in London. And it was a really great uh, English course. That's fantastic. Great nice to have you back, you. Maite, virtually. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. So um, a question to all of our viewers. Uh, how about, uh, as, as we answer some of the questions, uh, if you uh, write any words that you find trouble mispronouncing, for example, or had trouble mispronouncing, but no longer have this trouble because, for example, you studied with us. Yeah. And uh, meanwhile, Pfizer and Emma, uh, Faiza, you've uh, listened to quite a few of the words that Emma shared. Uh, do you have any more to add that you frequently hear as being mispronounced? Um, just, I think sometimes it's the the accents, the tube stops that I think Emma mentioned at the very start. There are a lot of places. Um, I think also, you know, sometimes it's words that aren't commonly used and then suddenly become commonly used. So. Um, 
an example around social media is GIF or GIF. Mm. Some people say GIF, some people say GIF. Um, another one actually that I thought of was furlough. Mm -hmm. So before COVID, I don't think too many people were using the word furlough. Um, so, but if you look at it, you might want to say furlog or mm -hmm. some, so. Um, it's a classic O-U-G-H ending, Pfizer. That's what I yeah. said with Clara. It's impossible to predict how you're going to say that O-U-G-H. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, probably it just actually occurred to me that, you know, you, you often see it with certain songs as well, that if you were to read the lyrics, it doesn't seem like they would rhyme based on the spelling. But then yeah. when you think about the pronunciation, then suddenly they do. So um, it's a very entertaining language, I would say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, um, and exactly as Emma said, like, don't worry about making mistakes because everybody will. Um, I'd say, for example, for myself, my accent has changed a lot over the years. So there are certain words that I say. Like if I've been, if I spend a lot of time with my family in Canada, then, you know, I say a lot of outs and abouts. Um, <laughs> but when I'm in the UK, then it sounds a little different. So uh, pronunciation can also change um, for an individual. Uh, yeah. So just feel confident in trying it out because everybody's bound to make a mistake at some point. And it isn't a mistake. It's just your style. Yeah. Mm -hmm. exactly. yeah. Okay. That's it. We've got uh, Mudatir, uh, who actually quoted uh, thumb as one of uh, the silent letter words. And I yeah. think this RLM combination, I can think of salmon uh, as well. Some, yeah. some people salmon. say salmon, but mm -hmm. salmon. And then uh, other tube names. Yes, Emma. I would say the L is often, especially L and M together, it's like almond. Lots of people say almond again difficult to say like if there's one correct one not correct in britain yeah. i think we're more likely to say almond no mm -hmm. l yeah mm -hmm. but in canada you're more likely to say almond do you think i'd say almond yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 there's no right answer no right answer. oh the worst is uh almond nougat nougat mm. but nougat nougat yeah. nougat, nougat. Uh, just oh nougat. i say nougat but mm. i don't know that's that's for me trying to do a fancy French accent. So yeah, you know, that's well, that's one of the things we were talking about as well. That you know, there are many words in English that are from other languages, and it's sort of like, how do you say it? So, like, I can think of the kismet. Mm -hmm. It's English, but it's not English because um, yeah. you say, like in uh, Bengali, you would say kismet, but it's like, is it kismet? Is it? And then in Arabic, you'd say kismet. So it's just like. Yeah. What is it? Um, <laughs> so it's the same with the French yeah. words. You know, we were talking yeah. about nougat and like all of these other ones that somebody might slip into their natural pronunciation of it because the word actually originates in another language. Yeah, exactly. And generally in English, if you pronounce anything in French, you have to pronounce it with a terrible English accent. They sound correct. Yep. Yeah. Uh, we've got another comment from Dugu. Uh, Sir her takes an R in between and uh, she finds it very difficult to uh, remember. Yes. Yeah. Connected speech patterns, yes. Yeah. I think this is the thing is that when you talk about pronunciation, I, we can talk about there, there are these rules, there are these patterns, there are things to observe when you're listening. And I think that's the key listening, observation, and then naturally your pronunciation will improve as a product of that listening, that learning together will result in better pronunciation. Mm. Realistically, when you're talking, when you're like sort of answering a question or giving a presentation, you're not gonna say, okay, I've got these two words together. So is this sound gonna carry on to this word or am I going to have a little, no, no. Yep. <laughs> otherwise you would speak so slowly, you wouldn't be able to say anything. So mm. I think it, it's a balance between learning some pronunciation rules, practicing it a little in you know safe space, whether that's at home, in the classroom, wherever that is, maybe getting some feedback on it, listening, mm -hmm. noticing, and then naturally your pronunciation will improve. Mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. And uh, we've got uh, a couple more comments that I wanted to mention. So Frank... Uh, says that if you need help in French, uh, I'm here. So thank you. Thank you. We, we need a lot of help. <laughs> maybe if you maybe you can actually uh, 
share some of the uh, French words that are almost similar in English, but for example, if you've got any questions with them, um, that'd be great to, um, to actually give those words uh, as some examples. And then we also have um, Nagam, uh, who's asking us, so how can you help us uh, find the right pronunciation? Um, so that's probably the question, uh, question that kind of I think he's asking the pronunciation for examination. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the word examination, okay, so examination, five syllables, okay, and the stress is on the fourth syllable, the, uh, the, the penultimate syllable. So examination, so you lean towards the Asian, like examination. I had to take several examinations when I was at school, okay? It might be confusing because the abbreviation which we normally use is exam, exam. Okay, so it's a different stress. Examination, yeah. exam. Great. And, a, uh, in the subcontinent, you also have the government. It's also like you would say government rather than government. Um, and that's just, I think, also slightly accent based. Um, yeah. in terms of how English is spoken there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. Great. Uh, another question is from Ivana, uh, um, who uh, asks us about uh, pronunciation of comfortable, uncomfortable, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, says that it's very different, uh, difficult to uh, pronounce. I guess maybe, uh, Ivana, I'm not sure, um, which country you're joining us from and your first uh, language. But if it's French, then yes, I guess in French, it would be slightly different. Comfortable, uh, uncomfortable. Yeah, uh, so it's a slightly different place. That's I think when the word is very similar mm -hmm. to the word in your first language, but the stress is in a different place, that's hard. If you're learning it as a new word, then you can learn it with the correct stress, no problem. But when it's almost, almost the same as the words in your language, but not quite, I think that's when it gets tricky. And mm -hmm. in this word, it's the first syllable, comfortable, comfortable. Okay, like come here, that sound, comfortable. Mm -hmm. Okay, can you say it? Yeah. Yeah, it's hard. And then I'm not sure if this is a question, uh, but Frank. Oh, he's, uh, if you need help okay. in French, I'm yeah. here. Yes. <laughs> yep. Oh, um, okay. Great. Yep. Oh, there's another question from Christian. Mm -hmm. uh, let's just show it. Another very oh. interesting word. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So acquire. Acquire, exactly. Like, so, so CH is normally pronounced CH, but in this case, it's choir, <laughs> like QU. Okay. So, yeah, that's yeah. really hard. Yeah. Yeah, and then quite. it's even more confusing because if you say acquire and you don't put a space, that's a different word entirely. Because <laughs> you could acquire something, which means you mm -hmm. gain something, you get yeah. something. Um, yeah, so, or yeah, you could I, be in a choir, which means you're singing. <laughs> mm -hmm. Great. It's, uh, it's, really, it's really random, yeah. But this yeah, is, I think, part of the excitement. So, you know, um, We've had, and it's it's so wonderful to see so many of our alumni here with us and continuing on their language learning um, learning journey. And I think that's one of the things that you know you can constantly be learning because there's something else that you'll discover in the language um, once you've kind of gotten to a certain certain level. And uh, it's it can be um, exciting, it can be entertaining, it can be frustrating, <laughs> but it's all kind of part of that overall journey of just continuing to learn and finding quirks along the way. And yeah. I would certainly say the English language has a lot of quirks <laughs> to keep yeah. you entertained. Definitely. Definitely. Well, I think it's right. part of an island and having all those influences from, you know, from Germany, from France, from um, Scandinavia, you know, mm -hmm. all things mixed together it means that, you know, our language is ultimately like a crossbreed of all those different languages together. Mm -hmm. Oh, look. French, you see, that's an example of how yes. an English yeah. person would probably say pain oh chocolate. Pan <laughs> <and> chocolate. <Yeah. laughs> Instead of pan au chocolat. Yeah. 
I think where you can tell quite a lot about the person about how they pronounce that word, whether they attempt to do a French accent or whether mm. they don't know, I'm going to try to say it in the most English way possible. Absolutely. Mm. Right. Good. So, uh, question, uh, Faiza and Emma, for uh, those of our viewers uh, who would like to uh, practice uh, their pronunciation in English, what can we offer in terms of the training? Yeah. So, um, with how our courses are structured, whether they're face-to-face -face or they're virtual, a lot of it has speaking practice and fluency kind of emphasis. So, um, if you're taking a group course with us, you'll have a lot of opportunity to um, practice. Uh, there will be areas that will look at pronunciation. So you'll look at words like Emma took you through today in the live stream. Um, depending on the course you're doing, if you're doing a business course, it might be specialized words. If, for example, you're doing a legal course, um, there'll be some legal language in there. Uh, so our group courses are a really great opportunity for you to, to have that practice with other students. Um, Many of the students will be coming from different parts of the world. So I think that's also very helpful for your own listening and for your understanding that like different countries will have different pronunciation. And, um, you know, we live in such a global world, you're, you're gonna come across different accents. I mean, we have three different ones in this live stream. Um, yeah. and that's just how the world is. So I think that can be quite helpful too. Um, for some of our clients, if they want to do some one-to-one -one training, um, we can offer different kinds. So there is training that focuses on the English language side, um, which will have some pronunciation, but we also have a specialized voice and accent training, which is a little bit different um, because it looks at the mechanics of how you speak. So our trainers are different. Um, they will be, it's very interesting, but they will be doing things like, um, muscle exercises like your jaw movements or your tongue placement or where there's stress or where there's intonation so it's about kind of like changing how you form sounds um and for many of our clients you know it's a little bit about the clarity of how they communicate um so it helps them to understand you know how they pronounce certain words um, so that's a very different kind of training because you're looking at the mechanics of how you speak. Uh, whereas with our other training, it's like, what are you saying? How do you form the sentences and how would you pronounce a word? So we've got lots of options depending on what you prefer. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you, uh, Faiza. And uh, Emma, maybe if you could say a few words uh, from your perspective as a trainer, how um, actually helping people to pronounce correctly uh, how how this process goes uh, in class? Well, I think it depends what sort of what comes up in class. I think some some words and some phrases. I think we we study together as a group. So we we look together, we drill it, we practice it all together. Um, some pronunciation issues are more first language specific. So in some languages you have some sounds, in other languages you have other sounds. So we have two ways of doing dealing with that really. We do some together as a class and then other um, points, you might give individual feedback to students, you practice particular sounds with them, you make them more aware of particular features of English pronunciation because that can vary from student to student. So I think it's always a mix of individual feedback and then group work together. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you very much. And uh, I also want to uh, add to what Pfizer just said is that you can find uh, any um, a, uh, information about uh, our training uh, on the website londonschool.com and uh, if you've got if you would like for example to train with us uh, then you can also contact us on this uh, email which is shown on the screen clients at londonschool.com uh, so uh, unfortunately uh, we don't have a lot of time uh, for this live streams uh, and, of, and uh, there's more uh, time, for example, if you take classes with us, but uh, we do have just a couple of uh, sure. very brief questions that I would like uh, uh, to take from the audience. So one of them is a follow-up question uh, from uh, Nagam. Um, yeah. So and, I think, uh, sorry, yeah. and uh, he, uh, he asks, okay, so, uh, if he's got slightly different um, 
advice on how to pronounce the, uh, uh, a word, which one uh, should he follow? I remember right at the beginning of this live stream, we said that there were different ways. So Pfizer might say, I don't know, scone, and I would say scone. She might say neither, I say neither. I think it might be, maybe in, in some places, they do say, e I think what you've written down here is examination. Okay, that's not how I would say it. Yeah, I think how lots of people in London would say it. But that it could be the case that in a different part of the world, that's exactly how they say it. Yeah, you would in the subcontinent, you would say examination. Like, yeah. I don't know, did that sound any different from? It's, it's, yeah. I, I can't hear a huge difference. Yeah. I would say the stress examination, like, examination, examination. I, I don't yeah. think, I think examination. in any kind of examination <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, situation, I don't think either of those would be said to be wrong. Both mm. of them would be correct pronunciations of that word. Okay. Mm. So don't worry too much. I think they both would be accepted as correct. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you can just tell your students like either, like either, like scone, like scone. You can say this two ways. <laughs> Both of them are yeah. correct. Yeah. Okay. And uh, just a follow-up comment from Nagam, uh, who says that he would like to join our voice and accent training. Sure. So, uh, Send Nagam, us an email. Yes. Yeah. So we'll you can always you. contact us. Yeah. And uh, I'm just going to show uh, the, food the one. email. Again. The food one. Yeah, I saw the food one too. That, okay. That, that's a tough one. Another question from Ivana. Oh, classic question. So this is a place in Western England, okay, and it's called Worcestershire. Worcestershire. Again, a yeah. bit like Leicester. <laughs> it's like, so you, there's lots of letters you don't say, okay? Worcestershire. So Wor Worcestershire. Worcestershire. Worcestershire sauce. Yeah, and um, Ivana, you're not the only one who calls it the something shower sauce. And I think there are many people in the world that know what that means. <laughs> and then you're like, can I have that, you know, something shower sauce? And they're like, yes. Mm. Well, I noticed in Portugal, they get all the way around that and they just call it English sauce. So that's not... <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's not nice. sauce. Yeah. Great. So, uh, again... Uh, I would like to say thank you to uh, everyone who joined us for taking this time uh, and uh, sharing it with us and uh, learning something about this uh, this time about pronunciation uh, in English. We hope to see you again on some of our other live streams. For example, one of the live streams that's coming up uh, would be about Christmas films, where you would be able to uh, learn not only English, but also a little bit about uh, uh, the English culture, for example. Um, but um, Emma and Pfizer, as, as it is a good tradition, uh, what would you, if you would just um, say a couple of encouraging words to our viewers uh, related to the topic, what would you say? I would say, I would say that, um, it, it, as I said before, it's something where several pronunciations can be correct, okay? So don't feel too self-conscious about it. The best way to study uh, pronunciation is to listen and to be aware of those differences. And secondly, not to worry too much about it. Okay, so listen, be aware, try it. Don't feel that you can't speak because through speaking that you will improve. Thank you. Definitely. And I would agree. I'd say um, practice. I'd say um, everybody will have certain words that they can't pronounce, whether it's their native language or not. Um, and just also consider, you know, there are so many sounds in other languages that are equally difficult. Um, and so people will generally be quite sympathetic if um, there's something you're not sure about, ask. Mm, I, I do sometimes where I look at it and I'm like, mm, I'm not sure I know what that is. Uh, do you? And then if not, just kind of go for it. But um, that's where sometimes if you're a little bit unsure, it can help to study with other people to be in a safe environment, like Emma said, like in a classroom where you, you are given that space and that permission um, to change up 
and and like you know to try words and different pronunciations so just try it out Absolutely. what's the worst that could happen you'll just call it that shire sauce <laughs> 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 yeah. people will understand you i think that's the other thing that everybody's definitely been there at some point because we all weren't born knowing how to pronounce words perfectly so everyone's on a journey they're just at a different stage great that's uh thank you emma and faiza and thank you everyone who joined us uh, we hope you have a great rest of the day and uh you uh you stay uh well and safe and uh, keep learning english uh, see you soon. good luck everyone bye, bye.